Cool. Thanks, Hande. Um, okay, I just retitled my slide based on, uh, or the talk based on some of the discussion going on here, uh, which I've now lost, of course. I can't find where the chat window, there it is. Anyway, a lot of you guys are talk, just talking about um, the importance of learning about ontologies. Um, yeah, I you know completely agree, uh, and I have a slide about that towards the end, so I just wanted to um, just kind of reemphasize it here. It does seem to be a key point. You know, I have 10 minutes, it's going to be a short talk. I'm going to go through it. My job, you know, I know many of you guys here on the call. My job is to sell you guys stuff. I'm not here to sell you guys stuff today. So um, uh, what I'm here to do is really just talk about how CDD looks at the development of our platforms in relationship to this, you know, concept of standardizing the languages we're all using to communicate these important concepts, um, you know, while we're trying to do important science. So... So I hit the button, presumably, there we go. Uh, for those that you don't know, many of you of course do know about CDD, but we're a, we're a cloud-based drug discovery data management platform. Uh, we have folks worldwide and we have, you know, our flagship solution is in use um, in a variety of organizations to help them manage the most critical data. And over the past several years, we've been growing like crazy as people are more comfortable with cloud-based solutions and as we've developed a you know rather loyal following and you know I think I'd like to say that you know we do good work and people recognize that. So graph on the right just cumulative logins for our flagship platform. That flagship platform many of you guys know CD Vault where you can just manage your basic drug discovery data, compound registration, assay results, inventory and electronic lab notebook. That's actually going to be a key component of the discussion a little bit later. Um, Around the topic of ontologies and how best to use them in the drug discovery setting, we released a product uh, at the time called uh, Bioassay Express. We now refer to it as Annotator, but it's a way to create metadata around assays. And um, I'm not going to go into the details of that particular um, application, but you know, suffice it to say that there are a number of customers out there uh, using this tool to create assay metadata. But as we're talking about today, it's not always easy to understand what we're creating that metadata for and what we do with that metadata in the context of the rest of you know, the problems that we're trying to solve. The platform we released this year takes some of that annotated technology and expands on it. It's BioHarmony, so it's a, it's a data provision. So you subscribe to BioHarmony and you get a, a really great source of uh, information on known drugs. And so it says here, a centralized source for semantic drug data. So not just uh, going out to the public sphere and getting a bunch of information on various types of compounds, but also um, annotating that information, you know, pivoting, displaying, aggregating that data in unique and useful ways. So that's what BioHarmony is about. We released it this year. Head on over to biometadata.com, take a look, and uh, yeah, if you're interested, happy to happy to discuss more. Okay, so you know, fair is the principle by which we are all, you know, sort of. It's our it's our poll star these days. What we're what's guiding a lot of the discussions, and you know that is something that we as a company have been doing. We just haven't really um, articulated it as fair, but it's really great to see this industry, uh, uh, this principle sort of sorry permeate the industry these days. And I always think about it like a closet organizer show. My daughter actually came up with this this reference, um, you know, or maybe hoarders, right? Where what you're trying to do is is Marie Kondo your data if you. If your data is organized, it's easy to use, it's preserved and safe, and by sparking joy, it is now shareable with the people important in your life. And that's what at CDD we're trying to do, make our critical data and make it easy to access, secure, and collaborative. And so the, you know, the challenge when you're, when you're faced with your data, I'm gonna describe two basic challenges and what we're trying to, trying to do about that and why organizations and conferences like this are really important, but you know, scientists create experiments that are very complicated. They take all this complex information and they push it into, you know, a data table. And that data table then gets squeezed into a database. And oftentimes the information that's contained in this database is, is poorly annotated and contains very little that's gonna be relevant six months from now. Because especially in drug discovery, we don't understand the problem that we're actually trying to solve until say six months later. That's when we really say, oh, this is what the science has been telling us. So maybe temperature or the instrument 
or the assumptions into the calculations or what floor we were doing the experiment on. That's what's really important. You don't actually know what you're looking at, that what you're looking at are the important things that you need to, to discover until you know later on. Uh, somebody played a mind trick on you. So yeah, so, so this is what happens over and over again in drug discovery settings. You know, and to reduce it to money, a lot of companies spend a lot of money redoing a lot of experiments when the data was there to begin with. A lot of the problem is that data management systems center on what you know today, right? So scientists will go to an IT person and say, hey, I have some data that I need to ask questions about. And the IT person says, sure, what's the type of data that you're managing? Because the, for the IT person, and you know, not complaining about the IT person, this is very logical. They're saying, if I have molecules and results, I need a research data management system like our CDD vault. If I have samples, are we talking about inventorying these samples or are we talking about moving those samples through a workflow because then it's an inventory management system or a laboratory information management system they sound sort of like the same thing but they're really not and they can be quite divergent the capabilities a modeler will use simulations but anybody doing experiments needs an ELM so does a modeler need an ELM as well to communicate with the rest of the team I don't know it depends on what you're trying to do and these days we want more and more biologics registered in systems so we can understand what they are, give them numbers and track them through a process. So all of these systems are swirling around and the poor scientist is really just sort of faced with this idea that there's this big sea of data and I wanna ask questions of it that have to do, that have to cut across, sorry, with things like domain and source and type, right? So the, the scientist is saying, I wanna look at my internal chemistry data and look at the results or I want to pull out public biology data and look at the conditions that were used in the experiments, or I want to combine my internal and external chemistry data and ask questions of that. So the scientist is faced with this conundrum, I need to put data into operational systems, but ask questions that cut across all these sort of artificial designations. And how do we do that? Well, it's what we're doing here in this, in this you know, conference that is really important, right? So, so it's all about the data, it's all about the ontologies, but it's all about the metadata. So as what are we doing as, a, as an organization, as a company, what we're trying to do is, you know, follow a few principles that make sense, be receptive. I'm just looking at the time, so I'm trying to be quick here. We're, we're trying to listen to what the customers need and then be responsive to what the customers are asking for. That's actually harder than you think, you know. You, you, when you're trying to build software in a commercial setting, you need to do it in such a way that you know you can pay the bills and sometimes the customers are telling you things that, that don't make commercial sense but many times they are making commercial sense and you have to be able to filter that and prioritize prioritize that appropriately you also need to be flexible because one customer's workflow and another, another customer's workflow may need the same lego building blocks but may need them in different order um, and that's that's really sort of uh, that's really sort of tricky when you're trying to build in a system that's usable by a, by a wide variety of people you do want to be visionary, right? So you need to invest in long-term R&D, even though you don't know that Velcro is one of the most important things that comes out of the space program, right? You need to be able to put money into projects that don't have an, a, an immediate commercial benefit. Again, for small software companies, that can be challenging, but extremely important. You also need to say, look, I'm not going to make everything that my customers need, so I need to work well with partners, uh, not be a jealous company, and be able to have... Um, systems that work together. So what are we doing to evolve our platforms and what does this mean for organizations like this? You know, simply CVD Vault is, you know, adding different enhancements to current modules and adding new features like biologics. Our annotate, our, our annotator technology is working on scale up as well as administrative and configuration features. And, you know, BioHarmony has its own set of API and, and, and uh, new types of data improvements. But in the middle of all this, right, is metadata. So I like data and metadata. What we need to do, what we are doing in fact, is in each of these systems, adding additional ways of transferring information between our own systems, as well as other people's systems. And, and that only comes from having available data standards and ontologies, having those USB plugs that work universally, uh, across all of the different types of data that we are exchanging. Each of these different systems are increasing the amount of data. And as a software company, we can't simply just make up our own standards because then it's not you know, a standard. So 
Last slide, as, a, as an industry, how are we doing in all of this? You know, I call this the good, the bad, and the promising. You know, for the good, we do have this concept of fair now. And that's the fact is that the industry in the past years is recognizing that there's a challenge. We have uh, all, the, all the hardware and data storage capacity that we need, so, you know, yay us. The bad part is that like, like this thread has been saying, you know, we have a real challenge with day-to-day -day scientists understanding the importance of these challenges and adhering to you know, the rules of the game that we're all trying to lay down. I think the answer you know, in, this, in this chat thread is more education and more explanation about what's necessary. And we will raise a generation of scientists that recognize the need here. The regulatory agencies will come along behind this. They should, they have to, but you know, that, that's gonna require outreach as well. What's really cool are you know, things like this on Tala Bridge, organizations like Pistoia and Allotrope trying to build the data standards so that software companies like us can then build software to adhere to those standards and you know, allow us to build this lab of the future concept so we can share data in a meaningful and productive fashion. Uh, yeah, I'm out of time, a minute over, but thanks you guys. Thanks, Hyundai. That's all right. Thank you so much, Whitney. We're a little over time and everywhere. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with us until now. And I think many people uh, who are in the research realm don't always get a, uh, get exposed to the industry side and how their their work can be used in the industry and how confusing it might be for everyone. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, uh, it's great that, uh, like you said, the organizations like Pistoia and Elotrope and others and Obo Foundry, and they're trying to create some standards and some ways and some workflows and on Tall Bridge is uh, really trying to uh, connect the gap between the industry and the research. Um, so Whitney, if you could have one outcome out of this workshop today, what do you think it should be? And one outcome. <laughs> I know, right? Donuts. I, I, that's why I hate virtual conferences. You don't get any donuts. Um, yeah. uh, so, um, you know, the ambitious uh, 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 outcome that I think we as a company are looking for are standards that we can build towards, right? So, as a software company, you know this, right? The, the, the more clear the requirements from the customer side are, the better it is and easier it is for us to serve them. And that's why, you know, in sort of this pre-competitive space, you know, I'm, I'm happy to go trash talk competition <laughs> out there in the competitive space, but then we get together in these organizations and, act, and work together to establish the standards and the ontologies that will will allow us all to work really well and develop great tools that can work together for the benefit of and you know save time right we need to shave months and years off the drug discovery cycle so that we can you know save people's lives we're proving that we can do it we just need to do it better and more repeatedly so, so i guess that's my answer yeah that's yeah that's very important thank you so much for you know, i just say one more thing from my standpoint I think an imperfect standard that moves us forward is better than a perfect standard. So I think I think sometimes a lot of time is spent um, uh, on on small details when it's like let's get V one out and get working on that and then adjust as we go. So I guess that's my one particular comment. 